In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. At the end of the first service, I was singing to myself, take a good look, take a good look at yourself. But if you look around you, you will see some interesting photographs. And in the middle of them, it's written in memoriam. Because Friday was All Saints, and Saturday was All Souls. And in the community of our faith, Christians are referred to as God, God's saints. What I want you to do is to look at these photographs on the wall. And even those that are not displayed, to think about those you have lost between last year and this year. Father, mother, sibling, aunts, uncles, colleagues at work. Look at them. They tell a story. They tell a story about our life together. And possibly I want to ask you something. What do you remember of these folks around you? Tell me something you remember about them. Tell me something. Look at them and tell me something. Yes? Gaylord. I can remember him sitting over here working during the service, and he always had this frown that would make you smile. And I knew he was up to something, but we were in the middle of the service. <laughs> but he was that way, as you know. Yes. Yes. Who else? Do you, what do you remember? Yes? Mrs. Nash. Mrs. Nash. Mrs. Nash, my older girl mentor. I think about the Nashes as a partner inseparable. They were partners in everything. If you see one, you see the other one. And when one departed, I knew that the departure of the other one was not too far. And what I learned from them is that when the wife volunteers the husband, there was no discussion. <laughs> and I remember that. What else do you remember? Talk about that, Miss Parker. Miss Parker. What do you hear about Miss Parker? Sports. Sports. And Miss Parker did not care what you felt. She said it, and it's up to you to receive it or to... <laughs> Very audible. Very audible, yes. Yeah. She told you what was in her heart. She did not care how you felt. What? Miss Barrow fed the whole church. Yes. If you will give her permission to do that. Yes? Think about Fred. Fred. Yes. Yes. Remember Fred? Yes. And Fred was the link. Everyone who came to church, especially those that have not been for long. Where's Fred? And Fred would come every Sunday, even while he was taking care of Shandell. And now they are gone. What about Audrey? Yes. Quiet. Yes. Determined. Strong. Nothing would stop her when she could move. Not even the snow. Not the ice. Not the slits. What about Robert, most of you, if you remember Robert, he was GQ. Yeah. He was GQ, always dressed well. So, what about Herb Jackson? Well, Jackson. I heard because I heard from a good friend of mine. He would bring Mr. Hood to the church because he said, We are going through a one big mother. Yes. And he, told, he made me take him back home in the evening over there in Whitfield. So, I'll give him the ride back home. What I noticed about all these pictures, the number keeps increasing. And which means we are losing those who are our legends. And some of us are passing into that age. And the continuum is a daily experience that as we sleep and wake, we mature from one life to another. 
that we become the legends of our community and carries us each day. We are now the witnesses of Jesus. They have served their town. We are reminded of them. But we in the 21st century have a responsibility to living as God's saints here on earth. If I would reach that, I believe one of the deep places of their lives was a life of faith. A life in which they recognized that God is the, was the source of their lives. And as we continue with our theme on God of the Trinity, the same yesterday, today and forever, in the past four weeks, we have been looking at faith and how faith affects how our faith affects the dailyness of our lives, how we grow in faith. We looked at growing in faith in the use of our resources, stewardship. We also looked at prayer, growing in prayer, the attitude of persistent prayer, not giving up, and knowing what the answer is, yes, no, or wait. We also looked at the cleansing of the ten lepers. And those ten lepers, what we see was a part of God that creates the miracle, but the gratitude that expresses the deep place of faith in the one who came back. Because gratitude is an expression of faith. When we are gratitudes or when we show appreciation to God, we are showing our dependence upon God. And last week, we looked at faith and talked about humility. We talked about humility. I want to call that Humility part one, and today is humility part two. Humility part two. Faith is, if I take one of, I gave you a number of definitions last week, but as I looked at them, the one that spoke more to me was what C.S. Lewis said about faith, and I quote, True humility is not thinking less of yourself, it is thinking of yourself less. It is not thinking less about yourself, it is thinking of yourself less. From the Gospel this morning, we are introduced to a man, his name is Zacchaeus, and only Luke's Gospel tells us the story. Zacchaeus reveals the life of a natural man behaving differently. Natural men are controlled by me, myself, and I. They are, uh, the greatest problem with our lives is that people do not want to respond to the love of God. They base their lives on the three distinctive principles of the world, me, myself, and I. So the topic today is faith leads to surrender. Surrender to Christ and salvation is offered. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And the Bible also tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must come to God by faith. And the Bible also tells us faith comes by come on now, by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we see this queer character. This queer character whose name is Zacchaeus. But the first thing I want to mention in the teaching this morning is surrender brings each person to a personal relationship with Jesus. Faith leads us to surrender to Christ. And when you look at the epistle for this morning, you see faith is preceded by grace. Grace, mercy, and peace. Grace and truth. Grace is that umbrella under which each man that lives here on earth experiences the blessings of God 
irrespective of their relationship with God. It is grace that leads us to faith. God working with us in our attitude of defiance and reject, rejection of Him. God covers us with that umbrella and walks us through life until faith is born. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that is not of yourself, it is the gift of God. God gives us faith when through the natural occurrences of our lives we experience His graces and raises the question to the originality of the Creator who never changes. This God who is the same yesterday, today and forever. And the story about Zacchaeus is such that many people have heard about Jesus but have never attempted to look for him. He wanted to have a peek on who Jesus was. So we find that he must have heard about Jesus. Faith comes by hearing. He must have heard like the lepers, they must have heard, they heard about Jesus. And for Zacchaeus he knew Jesus was coming that way. Now, I want you to position yourself. He was rich, he was powerful, he was popular in one sense to the Roman government. And in case you don't know, there are many people in our world today, they are rich, they are powerful, and they have influence, but they are empty somewhere. It's just like when you recognize that the pitfall of many of our lives as men is wine, women, and wealth. Did you know that? Any male who follows these three, according to Solomon, will fall. Because he tried all of them and he saw that all was vanity. They could not create the anchor for the life. So Zacchaeus had these. But he had something that was missing in his life. Zacchaeus was very well placed in society. But he was in love. Because he was Uncle Sam of his day. I don't like Uncle Sam. And for the past two years, I have not got anything from Uncle Sam. I have to pay Uncle Sam, and that makes me a little concerned. <laughs> That the political changes and structures have deprived me of some of the things that enhanced my life. And I'm saying, how long is Uncle Sam going to take my money? And if you bring it practically, that was the guy that was in this crowd. His name was Zacchaeus. He's Uncle Sam's representative. In those days, the tax collector was not direct with the people that they dealt with. They had commissioners. <coughs> people whom they appointed to take the taxes from the people. And you know what that meant? Every council or, or tax collector placed their own commission. So people were being exploited. And Zacchaeus was there. He could be in hiding. But who wants to be in hiding when someone like Jesus was passing? Have you ever thought about it? He wanted to see Jesus. So he had position, he had power, he had wealth. And these are the things which stop people from coming to Christ. What these things produce on their own is pride and arrogance. You know many rich people who are arrogant when it comes to the things of God. They are well placed and yet they are arrogant about the things of God. They speak about me, myself and I. I did it. I walked for it. But Zacchaeus, in the midst of that, had an obstacle. It was a physical obstacle. He was short. We are not told how tall he was, what his height was. And for many people coming to Christ, they, are, they have obstacles in their lives. And even in the church, we have obstacles in our lives. For him, it was just his height. And sometimes these are physical disabilities. That stop people from coming to Christ. I stammer. 
I don't hear much. I don't want to, you know. In fact, they should, those deficiencies should lead us to run or to pursue Christ. Zacchaeus never stopped at his obstacle. He found a solution. He saw and heard, or he heard that Jesus was going to come this way. And the streets were lined up. And while the streets were lined up, Zacchaeus came there. And listen to what he did from the gospel. Knowing his problem, he ran ahead. Because he wanted to see Jesus. Amen? Amen? He could have thought about the fact that if I climb that tree and all these people I take their tax from, they can stone me and kill me. But any obstacle that will stop us from coming to Christ, who is Lord of all, will stop us against everything in life. And what are some of our own obstacles? Intellectualism, we know it, we can reason things out. What do you want to tell me? I know about God. I've been in the church tradition. I was saying to the congregation this morning, some of us who are from the traditional churches, we may be stopped from coming to Christ. I said this morning, and I will say it again, many of us who are Episcopalians, we are not taught studying the Bible, reading the Bible and knowing the truth. We are a church of ritual. We know how to genuflect, we know how to make the sign of the cross, we know all of that. And those are some of, sometimes the limitations to our coming to Christ. I know it. I remember growing in, I am a cradle Episcopalian, even though you cannot believe it. And I followed all since I was a baby to this day. I love my tradition. But there came a time in my life when I wanted to see Jesus myself. I wanted an experience, an encounter with Jesus. And so in the 70s when the wind of revival was blowing all around the world, the gospel, I found meaning in the gospel that Jesus died for me. So that tradition is broken through. I know that I am a sinner and I cannot save myself and only Jesus will save me from sin. Not my religiosity. It is a relationship. It was a relationship that brought me into God's family. And I wish we could say that more. All of us are sinners saved by grace. But the question is, when did we encounter this Jesus in the journey of our lives? Episcopalians talk about, I've been a Christian from the time I was born. Methodists do the same. Catholics do the same. But a, a baby born in a garage is not a motor car. It's a car. It's a baby, sorry. The place of birth is different. But the place of birth does not make us. To be a, to a relationship with Jesus is what we need to emphasize. And then our attitude to everything changes. So Zacchaeus climbs up. And when you begin to demonstrate differences in your life, or when people see that you are beginning to move closer and closer in your relationship with Jesus, they are going to criticize you. They criticize Jesus. He's eating with sinners. In our lives, do sinners see anything about Jesus in us? Do we bring them to recognize who Jesus is? Or do we, are we so distasteful in the community in which we live that nobody wants to hear about this Jesus that we follow? Zacchaeus offers some challenges. So let me point out a few in the teaching this morning. Jesus gets there and Jesus stops. Amen. He knew he was looking for him. He knew he wanted to see him. Anyone who seek for Christ, Christ will find him. Or they will find Christ. And most times it's Christ who finds us. But he's waiting for us to seek. So he gets there. He calls him by name. Zacchaeus, come down. What a moment for Zacchaeus. What a moment when he could experience that the one he was trying to have a peek of recognizes him and tells him to come down from that tree. 
I don't care what the situation is. When we seek God, God will make himself known. And Jesus invites him down. I could see the joy and the glee on his face. He comes down and he says, Jesus, I, I want you to be a guest in my house. And Zacchaeus tells me, number one, when Jesus is invited, conviction is evident. Conviction is evident. Come to my house. For some of us, we open the sitting room to Jesus, but there are some doors in our houses we need to open. Doors of prejudice, doors of unforgiveness, doors of, you know them, pockets of, some doors of fear, some doors of, you know them. He says, come to my house. And once Jesus gets there, he's convicted. He knew he was a thief. He has been stealing from people. There at that moment, conviction comes and conversion takes place. And then reconciliation is promised. If I have stolen, he did not say three times, he said I'll pay back four times. That's what happens when one comes to Jesus. They are changed. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature. The old is past and all things become new. He was now a new man. Whilst they were criticizing him, he was experiencing the love of God deep down in his heart. Amen. And finally, Zacchaeus speaks about the change that follows a conviction. It says, you know, I can't hold on to this wealth. I can't hold on to my bitterness. I can't hold on to my unforgiving spirit. I cannot hold on to my pride. I cannot hold on to... You know them, not so? Are you with me? Mm? I can't. I can't hold on to them anymore. And you know what? Jesus knows when we are serious. He says today, salvation has come to this house. Hallelujah. He says today, not tomorrow, because the hearing says the valiest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon receives. Amen? Amen. Today, because all of us are children of Abraham, and by Abraham we are seed of Adam, that sin is our biggest problem that has separated us from God. But when we come to God by faith, salvation is born in our hearts. And change is the evidence of our relationship with Jesus. I don't know, you'll be out there this week. How are you going to show your faith in the Zacchaeus is out there? You are the Jesus. I am the Jesus of 21st century. I am the one who would let others see Jesus. You are the ones who would let people see Jesus. How are you going to treat the Zacchaeuses? Are you going to treat them in love? Are you going to go with them so that possibly you can become all things to them? That God might save them? I can't answer for you. But I have one thing I can say. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. So tell others about Jesus. Tell them about his love for you. Tell them that he's the savior of the world. Amen. Amen. Do you receive the teaching this morning? Yes. Do you receive the teaching this morning? Zacchaeus, calm down. So wherever we are, Jesus will know when we call and he will stop at our post and life is changed.
Jesus. We beat ourselves into his hands. And I ask that the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will be with you all. And all those whom you love and pray for both far and near, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.